I'm so excited. I'm so honored to be able to come and speak to you coaches. I know Trina and I have been super excited to be able to share some tips with you. Um, this is the most important part of your business, your customers. And your customers are going to be the people that build your business, right? Awesome. And we just want to say that Darren Hardy told you the other day that it's not who gets there the fastest, it's who stays the longest. So you can prove to yourself today that you can stay the longest because success is not found at the pool, it's found right here. So give us, yeah, put your hands together. We need just one hour of your time, start to finish, for you to be able to build a star diamond business. So stay with us, Hillary's gonna kick it off and I'll bring it home. Yes, so we're here to talk about how to build a customer business that goes to a star diamond business. So I'm gonna fast forward here. So it starts with an amazing customer experience. It doesn't happen because you post a link on Facebook that says buy my stuff. It happens because you related to somebody. The reason that they join with you to be your customer, the reason they buy a product from you, the reason they join your challenge groups is because they've connected with you. They can buy that anywhere. They can go to Amazon. They can go to the T Beachbody website. The reason they're going to do that is because they've had that connection with you. And the reason they're going to join your team and become a Star Diamond coach is because you've created an, an amazing experience for them, something that they want to be a part of. So I'm going to take you on the road to success and show you a little timeline. And I'm going to use me as an example. I started as a customer. I'm now a Millionaire's Club coach in five years. I'm a four-time elite coach. Jeez, I don't have to remember that. <laughs> I've been on many trips, but it all started, you guys. I'm a stay-at-home mom, regular person, regular girl. I still am. I started it in my basement on my couch with my kids running circles around me. And I started doing that. I started as a customer in July of, I'm sorry, January of 2009. I made a decision to do a little program called Chilean Extreme. You guys are familiar with that, right? After I had had my second son, a about a year later, I was about 225 pounds. And I had decided, you know, I have these two beautiful boys. I have to do something. I drew the line in the sand that day when I got that email from Beachbody that this program had been coming out. I love Shaleen Johnson. I had been doing Turbo Jam, but it was a program that I knew I couldn't get to the gym. I had to stay at home with my kids. I needed to lift weights because everybody knows muscle burns fat, right? So I decided that day I had to make that change. I had to commit. I couldn't make the excuses anymore. I couldn't say, oh, I'm too tired. My kids, you know, they don't let me work out. There was no more excuses. I was 34 years old. It was time to do something for me and do something for my family. So I became a customer. I also got a coach and I decided to commit to that program. And fast forward about nine months later, I had lost that 75 pounds. And along the way, as you guys all know, right? Thank you. And along the way, as you guys all know, I started telling people about it. And I myself personally have done most of my business on social media, those who may know me, um, because I was at home. I could do that at home with my kids running around and changing diapers and watching the wiggles on TV. And, and it was easy for me to, to share my story on Facebook. It was easy to inspire people. And of course, I participated in a group, an accountability group that kept me accountable. And that's really the nuts and bolts of what helped me to lose that 75 pounds. It was the inspiration of my coach. It was the inspiration of the community around me in Beachbody and being a part of something that you know, I didn't expect. I didn't expect to have that support. Um, you know, when I had a bad day, somebody reaching out to me and saying, hey, 
it's okay, wake up and have a better day tomorrow. And the days that you struggled, there was always somebody there to pick you back up, right? It's okay. But that's the reason that I succeeded in losing that 75 pounds was because of that, of this community, right? You guys all know that. This is an amazing community. So I became an enthusiast. I wanted to scream out to everybody, you need to do this program. I wanted everybody to know, everybody that struggled, all my friends, all of my friends on Facebook, the moms that I saw at home that were struggling to lose weight, you know, to do this program. So, of course, I decided to sign up to be a coach because that would be the best way for me to help other people. I'm like, I think I could do this. I was a little nervous because, like, how am I going to build this business when I'm at home with two young kids? I was already doing that. I was already doing that on social media. And I had decided to share my before and after pictures. And how many of you have done that when we're about scared to death and shaking in your shorts? <laughs> Raise your hands. Yeah, see. Um, so I did. I decided that day, one day, to put up my before and afters. And I wasn't even um, at the end of my journey. And I had the most amazing response from people that were so inspired by me and couldn't wait you know, to find out what I was doing. So I was excited, of course, and I was like, wow, you know, this is possible. I'm just sharing what worked for me. And just by me walking the walk, I was inspiring other people. So I quickly realized, yeah, I can do this business. I can build this business. I can make this happen. So, of course, being an advocate, I became a coach in September of 2009. And I quickly, within two weeks, became an Emerald coach. I was frantically sharing my story on Facebook, not in just fitness pages. I wasn't looking for, you know, just those people who want to get fit. I was going to pages of people who were like me, people that I had things in common with. And as an example, my sons were obsessed with the Pirates of the Caribbean. So I used to connect with a lot of people on the Pirates of the Caribbean movie page, you know, a lot of moms. And um, I remember this one particular lady who would, who would talk about her son wearing the costume all the time. My son would go to Disney World at 90 degrees with his Pirates of the Caribbean costume on. So we had something in common. So I would start conversations with people. And you guys, it doesn't matter whether you, you like the color blue or you drive a Jeep. There is somebody out there that you can connect with, with things that you do. And that's really how you find that connection with your customers. A simple conversation of, hey, my son likes to do that too. How are you? And I just started having those conversations and bringing people to my party, which is my Facebook page, continuing to connect with them and doing that through social media and checking in on them. And when I was posting about a challenge group or something I was doing, people were raising their hands. When I was asking people to come with me on this journey of helping other people, people started to raise their hand and my team started to grow. By the end of my first year, I was a five-star diamond coach in 2009. In 2010, I became a top coach and I went. I had to go to France, which was pretty cool. Um, something I would have never imagined flying around the world. But I started to realize, okay, I have all these coaches what am I going to do? How am I going to motivate them? Well, I realized I had to share my, I had to do the same thing with my coaches that I was doing with my customers. I had to have, keep that connection. Because my business, start, most of my coaches were my customers. So I needed to keep that going. I needed to keep inspiring them. And so I had to teach them to do the things, the exact things that I was doing on Facebook to connect with people, to build my team. I duplicated that with them, and they started to duplicate that as well through trainings, through calls, one-on-one, -on -one, through text messages, you name it, staying connected with them and encouraging and inspiring them, much like I did with my challenge group people as well. And then I have this team, and I have to lead them by doing those trainings, staying engaged, not just dumping them into a, a boot camp and saying, hey, I hope you get there, right? Um, and teaching them 
that they have to build, they have to connect with their team, they have to inspire people to do this business. And that's how you grow a star diamond business. It doesn't come from just me. My team is not built on just me. It's built on all the many star diamonds. And I think in my downline right now, we have about 60 diamond or star diamond coaches. Everyone is helping me build Team on Fire, which is my team. Woo go Team on Fire. Is there anyone out here? Yay! So you guys, it, that's what it takes. And it really just starts, as I said, it starts with a hello. Your business is not built when you go emerald just by the customer leads that you get from Beachbody. Your business is going to grow by the connections you make, whether you're at the grocery store or obviously I do a lot on Facebook, whether you're on Instagram or Facebook, just messaging people, like I said, connecting with people that are like you, not just because they're on a fitness page, but because they have things in common with you. And, and reaching out and just saying, hey, you know, how was your day? Going back through your list and checking in on them, commenting on them. And when you do post about your groups, eventually, maybe not the first time you talk to them, they're going to raise their hand and say, I'm ready. What is this stuff you're always talking about, right? You look like you guys are having so much fun out there in Vegas. I want to do this with you. So your business will continue to grow by putting those people on your list, adding them to your customer list, and connecting, of course, with the customers that you get from Beachbody, which is pretty sweet that we do get that. Um, as an example, when I started in this business, I'm not much of an organized person. Um, it's pretty much organized chaos, I like to call it. I'm horrible at spreadsheets. So everything from my business from the first years, I have all these notebooks. And I look back through those notebooks. Anybody that I had spoken to that had became my customer or I had sent a Shakeology sample to, um, I look back now, about 90% of those people have joined my team. It's pretty impressive, right? It's all because I made a connection with those people, right? So here's just some examples of some things that you can do. It really it becomes creating an amazing experience for your customers. You know, showing them that you care, that they're not just somebody that doesn't have a coach or maybe once in a while they got an email from you and they've never heard from them again. I've heard that. How many of you have heard that? People that don't even know they have a coach, right? So you have, to, you have to set yourself up as being somebody special that they can connect with. And these are just some different examples of some things that some coaches, some of Trina's coaches and, and my coaches have done. Um, there's a postcard up there that a girl sends to her, her brand new customers just to welcome them, sends them in the mail, which is pretty neat. Just a special little hello. Um, I myself will welcome customers with an email or a video that just says, hey, it's me, I'm your free coach. You know, what can I do to help you? I'm a customer just like you. I lost weight with the programs and I do accountability groups because I still need to keep myself accountable. Very simple, not buy more stuff, right? It sounds a little icky. So I'm just gonna read one of these, which I think is one of my favorites. Um, it says, I called three of my customer leads today they don't always answer or get back right away, but it's definitely worth reaching out to them. They've already reached their hand out for help by purchasing a product. Here's what I usually say. Just say hi. I'm Sharon Johnson, your free Beachbody coach. Whenever you buy a product from Beachbody, you get a free coach, and that's me. Just wanted to reach out and connect with you. I'm like an accountability buddy to help you reach your fitness goals. Feel free to call or text me back so we can chat. Or if you happen to be on Facebook, we can connect there too. Talk to you soon. And this is what the, the girl replied back. Got your message? Give me a little bit to get my exercise routine underway, and I'll look for you on Facebook and text you. Boom. Another text that one of my coaches. Um, Hi, Lori. I'm Tara Sparks, your free beach body coach. I'm just wanting to touch base with you to go over your goals, how to use the website, and what program you're wanting to use. When would be a good time to connect with you? Any time after 6 p.m. works for me, thanks. Wonderful, if it's tonight's okay, I'll give you a call. It just works for me. Simple, you don't have to overthink it. It's, it's not fun to be salesy, it's not fun to be icky, and when you guys get those emails in the mail, what do you do? 
probably delete them, right? So it's better if he's, hey, just me, I'm your coach, and I send out something weekly to people as well, just saying, hey, it's me, this is what I'm doing. And by the way, I have another accountability group or a challenge group starting next week. If you're interested, just give me a holler back and maybe a free recipe tip, and that's it. Not overloading them. So there's many things you can do. I do also some gifts. This is mine, those red boxes. They're not up there anymore. <laughs> the slides are gone. So I do some red boxes, just sending a little welcome to my customers. Oh, they're there. Or to even my new coaches as well that I do, just to let them know, hey, I'm thinking of you. It feels special when somebody knows that you're thinking of them or if they've done something in your challenge group that is amazing. It doesn't have to be expensive, just something that you can send to them that says, hey, I did a good job, right? And now you have to keep them talking as well. They're your customer. It isn't about just that one email or having them join that one challenge group. It's keeping them talking. Remember, you want these people to eventually become part of your team. And once you get to know them, those people are going to be part of your team. You're going to have people on your team that are like you. And you do that through those emails. I do a w weekly check-in email that just says, just like I said, hey, what's up? You know, uh, this is where I'm going. I'm in the Beachbody Summit. I'll be working out with Sean T. Um, and by the way, next week, I'm starting another challenge group. Simple. It's you. Make it sound like you. Don't make it sound like a salesperson. Because remember, you're trying to connect with them. You do this also through your challenge groups. Be you. Try and connect with them. Reach out with them. Talk to them. If they fall off the ladder, make sure that you are holding them accountable. Knock on their door. Text them. Voice message them. Check in on them. Because sometimes they're embarrassed, you know, right? They Maybe they had a bad day. And if they know that you're there for them, that could be the game changer for them. You can do it also. I have um, what I call Team on Fire Fit Challenge. It's a little accountability group that I will do for my 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 own customers um, that I just kind of dump them in there so I can have a way to communicate with them on Facebook. Um, I do challenge groups, of course, as well. But in your just an accountability group for your customers is great because you know it's a good way. You can do some giveaways. You can do some trivia questions. Give away free packs of Shakeology or a P90X hat something simple that keeps them excited. And when you do have a new program or a product, it's a great way to keep in touch with them. Also, your, your Facebook. You know, your Facebook is to inspire people. And you know those people, you're not messaging them every day. We don't want you messaging your coaches every day, I mean your customers every day, saying, hey, I'm here, hey, I'm here. They know you're there by watching you. If they're following you on social media, look at your social media, make sure it's go back and look. Is it something that you would want to read every day? Your Facebook, if you're using it for your business, that is your business. Don't post one day about how I'm working out and I'm inspiring people at the summit, and then the next day I went out too late in the casino and now I'm hungover. That's not very inspiring, right? But just keep people engaged. And I know I get messages every day, and it's not just because I posted about buying, you know, buying something, it's because it could be a quote that I posted. It could be a tip that I posted about being a mom. That's how I keep people connected with me. They always know that I'm there, and when they do message me and they do respond and they are ready, they become more engaged, right? And Beachbody has come up with this really cool tool. As I said, I'm not very organized, so anything that I can find to help me become more organized is perfect. So this tool is really great. It kind of helps you track, you know, a customer when they buy their Shakeology, you know, order, when did it ship, you know, when it has arrived. It just gives you the opportunity to remind you to check in with them. And how many people have sent a Shakeology to somebody and then you find out, they made it wrong. You're like, oh, it's awful. It's awful. I mixed it with water, and it's chalky, and I don't want to drink that stuff. And you're like, wait a minute. Did you look at the recipe? Let's try it again. So this will give you a reminder to help you do that. I think it's a pretty cool tool. You need a system of follow-up so you can keep track, especially as your business grows. You're going to have many customers, and you have to have a way to check in, to remember to check in with them. There are many different ways to do that, but this is a pretty cool tool that we now have. So I'm going to share with you 
a story um, of one of my customers who is now a one-star diamond coach. We connected through Facebook, through a Facebook group. We became friends. We talked for a long time. She had been in a car accident and been slowly doing Turbo Jam to get back healthy. And, you know, we connected because we like to shop online and, you know, just many things is connecting. And she started as a customer and she joined my challenge groups. And she's actually here at Summit as a one-star diamond coach. So it's pretty amazing. And I'm just going to play a little video so you can hear her story. Hopefully it plays. Hi, my name is Heather Coy. I'm a star diamond coach and I've been coaching for about four years. Something that really helped the success of my business, especially from the beginning, was having that full Team Beachbody customer experience. We as coaches can get so caught up in signing coaches and rank advancing and making money and all that stuff is great, but we forget that the important thing is having a firmly rooted foundation in the belief of our products, knowing they work, and passing that on, having our own story in the success of the products. Before becoming a coach, I was in a car accident that left me in so much pain that I really spent most of my days in bed. I went to doctor after doctor and specialist after specialist, and they all threw around words like chronic and pain management, all those things you never want to hear, especially at a young age. I finally saw a doctor who recommended that I worked on strengthening my core. And that's when I really turned to Beachbody products. We had Turbo Jam laying around at home, so I pulled it out and I did the ab workout. I mean, literally in 10, 15, 30 second increments, all that I could possibly stand until I was finally able to do the entire ab workout, which was a huge accomplishment for me at the time. Um, and after that, you know, I went on to do some strength training and then some cardio. And before I knew it, I was doing these full workouts. Well, I went back to the doctor and they were so impressed and so surprised at my progress that those words like chronic and pain management and all those terrible things that they had told me before kind of went by the wayside. To me, these programs, especially Turbo Jam, and you probably have your own, but these literally saved my life. And my story has been such a huge part of my success because I'm able to share that with people and, and encourage them through it. But it took someone, a coach, to encourage me to stick with the workouts, to share my story and to pay it forward. And that has enabled me to be where I am today. Uh, that's what we have to do with our customers as well. Uh, we need to hear their stories. We need to know where they're coming from. We need to know where they're going. We need to know what they want to accomplish and what they want to achieve. And then we need to encourage them to also share their stories and pay it forward. The reason that this business works for so many different people is that we each have such different stories. My story appeals to people that yours won't and yours appeals to people that mine won't. And that is totally amazing. That's why it's so, it's so successful for so many. And it, that's why it's also so important that we hear our customers' stories and encourage them as well. Honestly, it's gonna take all of us and our stories to, you know, to end this trend of obesity and it's vital that we're giving our customers that full Team Beachbody customer experience so that they're excited about not only their workouts and not just Shakeology, but they're, they're excited to share their story and to pay it forward. And then they're excited about Summit. And maybe they're not even going, but they're excited to see us go and excited to see the new programs that are coming up, uh, to see the new products that are coming out, and that they long to join us and be in part of that excitement. The best coaches are those that are firmly rooted in the belief of the products. And that's how our challenge groups need to be run. We need to help cultivate that sturdy foundation by you know, sharing our story and giving them that success that they can have as well, sharing that it's totally possible no matter what the situation might be. Um, and taking, taking my story and being able to share it and being encouraged to share it and pay it forward has taken me out of a full-time job that was extremely stressful to where I'm able to work from home, make six figures and travel. So I truly believe that having that full, full customer experience where I have that, that complete belief in the products has made all the difference in my business. Yay. So that's pretty awesome to go from a customer, that journey, and now she's a rock star on my team and she's an amazing leader as well. So my tips for your next 30 days is to really buckle down Look at your customers, look in your Beachbody office, reach out to your customers, find different ways 
that you can connect with them, whether it's through a text, through a Facebook message. Start to become really engaged with them and get to know them because that's the best way that you can help them. You know, and figure out a system to track them. You know, use that tracker and make sure that you're following up with your mm. people because that's mm. the most important part of your business is checking up on people to see how they're doing. They, maybe they need your motivation. And most importantly, reward them. Reward them, you know, even if it's through a text that says, I'm so proud of it, you that you made it through today. Whether you're recognizing them on your wall, whatever it is, make sure that you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and give this clicker, <laughs> I'll hold it over to Trina. She's going to talk to you about inviting. Awesome. Well, thank you, Hillary. I'm excited to bring you home. If you can take it to my next slide. I'm having a handheld mic, so Hillary is going to be my Vanna and advance the slides for me. Perfect. So here's what I need you to do, because I'm going to have to talk fast to get all these tips in for you. Uh, you're all seated. You just need to put your seatbelt on and get ready to fly, because in the next 30 minutes and 55 seconds, I'm going to download all the tips I can possibly share with you to move you up that spectrum, you, move you up the spectrum from coach to star diamond, all right? There's so many touch points along the way for you to create amazing experiences. It is amazing experiences every single day added up over time that create star diamonds, the compound effect of doing special things for your challengers and your coaches every day, even though it doesn't seem important in the moment, as Darren Hardy said, added up over time, creates a star diamond business. So in order to grow your business, you've had these amazing customer experiences that Hillary talked about. Now it's time to call them up to the big leagues. What do I mean by that? Inviting someone to be a part of your team should be an honor should be a privilege. They should feel like they're playing rookie ball as a customer and you're calling them up to the pros. And if you make that flip switch in your mind that you're not asking somebody a favor to join your team, that you are giving them an opportunity of a lifetime, who wouldn't want to play in the big leagues? Make it feel that amazing and exciting. So let's go to the next slide and I'm going to help you have better conversations. So you have had amazing customer experiences. You're ready to invite someone to be part of your team. This is the really simple formula that I have taught my coaches to use to get more coaches to say yes. So take notes on this. Listen up. This is going to help you grow your team, and you're going to help duplicate this amongst your coaches. So I'll give you an actual example of a coach on my team. I'm going to talk you through these questions. You can practice these four questions with your coaches before they talk to a prospect. So I have a coach on my team. Her name is Rachel. I met her at a spa. She was an esthetician. And I'm going to talk you through how my conversation went. It goes like this. In my head, I'm starting with, why did I think of Rachel? So I'm going to say, Rachel, I want to talk to you about something that I do, um, fitness coaching. I run online nutritional and fitness challenges. And I'm thinking about you for joining my team because, I'm thinking of you, because I really have always noticed you have a great smile and great energy. Every time I come to the salon, you really always make me feel welcome. You're just a great people person. So validating who she is. Then I said to her, and I know that you have a personal goal of getting in shape for your wedding. So I thought of you because this fitness team would help you do that. I also know that you love to run and that you might want to change up your fitness programs a little bit. What is in it for her? Specifically, Rachel, what I think is in it for you is that I know you're moving and you might want to make some extra income while you look for a new job. Now, I know in my heart she's not going to need to find a new job, but I'm going to put that out there to her that this will help her bridge that gap. So what specifically is in this Beachbody opportunity for her? I know you're moving. I know you could use to fill that income gap. I'd love to help you do that. I also know you want to stay in shape for your wedding, and I'm going to help keep you accountable because coaches, when they join the team, they get really game on their own fitness. Number three, what is it about Beachbody that I love that specifically relates to her? And this is where coaches get tripped up. They want to tell people everything they love about Beachbody, and none of it relates to that person. So you're actually driving them farther away. So I'm a trainer. I own a health club. What I love about Beachbody is it helps my clients at the gym make better nutritional choices. Now, if I tell Rachel, an esthetician, that, does that matter to her at all? No. 
So instead, what I say to Rachel is I think ahead of time, what do I love about the business that specifically relates to her? So what I said to her was, Rachel, one of the things I really love about the business is I've met so many new friends. I know you're moving and you're not going to know anybody in Lansing. This is going to be your new friendship group. This is going to be your new peer group. What else do I love? Being a Beachbody coach has kept me in the best shape of my life. How does that sound? Yeah, I'll sign up. I like that. New friends, best shape of my life. I like it. So I'm sharing with her specifically what I love that relates to her. Number four, I think through ahead of time, what do I know about this person? What do I think her objections are going to be? How can I overcome them, preempt them before they get there? So I say to her, Rachel, you know the best thing about this business is that you don't need to be a trainer or a fitness professional, because I know she's thinking that. The best thing about this business is you just need to have your own story and passion for fitness, and you're going to keep other people accountable. That's one thing I said. The other thing I said to her is I figured she would be worried that she didn't know anybody where she's moving. So I said, you know the other great thing is you can do this all from your computer. Everybody you already know on social media is a potential customer for you, so you don't need to know everybody in your neighborhood for this to be successful. And my last tip on here is I like to then close it by sharing with them exactly what they would do if they said yes with me right then. So then I say, and Rachel, you know what? I've got a women's group going right now on Facebook. It's called Fit Chicks. I'd love to get you in that, and you could actually start helping me run that group and comment back to these other women, and it's starting on Monday. So give her an exact example of what she could start doing to help. All right? I want you to know that you would use this same conversation no matter if it's someone, you know, that you met as a customer or your best friend. And I want to give you this quick example. You can't just assume your friends, your family, your best friends should join your team because you're a Beachbody coach and they should just support you. You can actually validate it and show them why they could be a great coach. And I talked to a coach on our team yesterday, Tierney, and I, um, I went through this with her, with one of her new coaches. So her new coach, Jocelyn, is her best friend. Let me show you how these same four things relate to someone you know really well. Jocelyn, what was in it for her? Or why did she think of her? Jocelyn is a 28-year-old single mom with a 3-year-old whose husband committed suicide. The next thing on Jocelyn's list was not to become a Beachbody coach. But Tierney thought of her. Why did she think of her? Because she has great loss in her life. So she could use something really positive. She could use some new direction. She could use some new focus, some new purpose, something to take care of herself. So Tierney said that. What was in it for her friend Jocelyn? Jocelyn, you are going to find a way to have an income to still be able to stay at home with your son. Your husband, I know, has passed, and you're used to being a stay-at-home mom who's now fearful of having to go out into the job world. This is going to help keep you where you want to be. Number two, what's in it for her? Number three, what does Tierney love about it that relates to Jocelyn? Tierney, what I love about this business, it has, Jocelyn, what I love about this business, it has poured positivity into my life. I've met amazing people. I've learned personal development. I've grown as a person. I see how you could use this right now. And number four, how can she help, help her overcome those barriers? Jocelyn, listen, I know you're thinking you're not where you want to be physically or mentally or spiritually right now. And you know what? That's going to help you be an amazing coach. So she's going to help her overcome those barriers. Jocelyn's thinking that she's not in the greatest shape. She's struggling in her own life. How could she possibly coach others? And you help them overcome that barrier ahead of time by saying how that's actually a perk of the business, is that you don't need to be in great shape, that you use your story to grow your business. Make sense? Awesome. So those are ways that you can start adding coaches to your team by having better conversations. The only way to have that is if you know a lot about them. Next slide. All right, so this is bonus gravy material that I'm going to um, share with you. And the reason why is that in my team meeting the other day, we had coaches on our team, star diamonds on our team, share their successes with the entire team. And it struck me so hard that all of these new star diamonds on the team had something super strong in common. What is it? This is honestly what I would tell you to go home and do if you want to become a star diamond coach. And you're thinking, when I tell you, I already know that, maybe we're already doing it. No, but listen, every single star diamond on my team, every single one is doing this. Every single one is running challenge groups together 
as a team. They are partnering up with other coaches in the organization and running challenge groups together. Why does this matter? We want to move someone from a coach up that timeline to a duplicator. So we are teaching them the challenge groups that work for us, and then we're encouraging them to find others on the team to work with to start running their own, right? We want them to add their own flair, their own personality to the things that we're already doing. So an example of this, one of my coaches, Amy Showman, was in one of my challenge groups called Fit Chicks. It's kind of average, mine is not that great. Amy learned from what I was doing and took it to an entirely new level. She took my challenge group and blew it out of the water and made it her own. Then she invited her friend Kira to be in the challenge group with her. Both, Amy has gotten to Star Diamond, I truly believe, because she's working with other coaches on her team and they're inviting new people into their challenge groups and working it together. So what I wanna do is share with you some of the tips that my Star Diamond shared in our meeting the other day. And there's about 10 of them and I'm gonna go through them really fast, so take some notes here. After, and the whole idea behind this, by the way, is to make your lives easier. Duplicate things that are working for other people. You wanna become a Star Diamond? Learn what other Star Diamonds are doing. Take it and make it your own, yes? So here's what my Star Diamonds are doing. Take it and make it your own. Duplicate it and add your own personality. After someone says yes to joining their challenge group, they send out a questionnaire that came from my coach, Sarah. She sends out questionnaires and others on the team have duplicated this now. In the questionnaire, it says, welcome to my new challenge group. We start on Monday. I need to know what your goals are. I need to know where you struggle, but here's a really fun question you can snag. I need to know, if you go MIA in this challenge group, do I have the right to stalk you? Yes, isn't that a good one? Sarah loves that one. And who could I reach out to if you start ignoring me? So one of the women in her challenge group gave her her husband's cell phone number. I was like, girlfriend, I need this challenge. And if I go MIA, you freaking call my husband and you tell him to get me back on track, right? So you wanna send out a questionnaire to get to know them as much as you can because you can create an amazing customer experience in that challenge group if you really know them. I know it seems obvious, but we could all do better at collecting that information. After you've collected that, make sure that you create a posting schedule for you and your team of coaches that you're working with. So if there's five of you running a Shakeology challenge group, divide up the days of the week and each be responsible for one of those days. So you as leaders need to start connecting on Zooms or conference calls and organizing your challenges. It also makes the workload seem a lot less intimidating when you can share it. Another thing that you want to um, figure out ahead of time is you want to divide up the content. So maybe Monday is Motivational Monday. Maybe Tuesday is Tasty Tuesday. Maybe Wednesday is, I know my friend Rexanne does Wacky Wednesday. Um, you can do Family Friday, Thirsty Thursday. You can make up your own, right? They didn't, those weren't like handed down from the mountain like these are ones you gotta do. Make up whatever sounds fun to you, right? One of the things my uh, coach Nikki Kerrigan does is one of their days is random acts of fitness. People have to go out into the great big wild world and do fun things in fitness to inspire others, like do five push-ups in a public setting, totally embarrassing, and then take your picture, all right? So divide up the days and divide up the content. Another fun thing to do is to announce your coaching team. So make a banner in your Facebook group and make it look like a starting lineup for a basketball team um, or football team and put your pictures in there and announce to your challenge group who they are led by, who the starting lineup is, who the coaches are. And I have pictures of all this that I'm, after I explain it all, I'm gonna flip through some slides and show you. After you have that done, you're gonna have your whole challenge group page set up and you need to load it. So the way we say it on our team is that you've invited to the party, now you gotta turn the lights on, turn the music on to the party before you add the people to it. Do not put people in your empty challenge group. Make it fun and exciting before they get there so they wanna stay. What kinds of things do you wanna load? Preload the food plan that you want them to follow. Take one from, obviously, from the Beachbody Coach Online Office from one of your challenge group guides. And then upload whatever point system, um, if you're using that, that you want them to follow. My team loves using a point system. And I'll give you an example of some points that you can collect. Points are just a way to keep people accountable to healthy daily activities, and then they can win prizes at the end. If you're not using a point system, please create one for yourself and share it with your coaches, right? Um, take five extra minutes and in your challenge group, post a welcome video of you and your coaches who are leading it. Let them see you in your everyday life. Let them meet you. It'll become more personal. 
right? Um, do a kickoff call or be brave and do a kickoff Zoom. Do a video Zoom with all the participants in your challenge group. I was doing mine on Sunday night at 9, 9 p.m. Eastern before my challenge group that kicks off on Monday. And on that Zoom, all I would say to them was introduce who you are, where you live, what you do. And then in mine, I had all women in mind, so I said, I want you to tell me what's one piece of clothing that you'd love to wear, right, just to get them thinking about, you know, something very tangible. And then I asked them to share something quirky or fun about themselves that we wouldn't know otherwise. So just a way for them to all get to know each other. My coach, Roxanne McConnell, shared the other day on a call that on her kickoff Zoom, they actually have door prizes. So just to motivate your challengers to get on that Zoom, it's like the first person on gets a door prize, or the person who answers a trivia question gets a door prize, which is kind of cool. Once they're in your challenge group, you want to private message them one to two times a week. If you're not doing that, do that. In that simple, quick message, use what one of my coaches does. She adds a PS at the end of her message. So in the message, it's, hey, Jody, you're doing so great in the group this week. Thanks for posting your fun plank at the park. P.S. I saw the picture of your daughter winning the spelling bee. Super proud of her for that. That's awesome. Loves getting to know you as a mom. So your P.S. in your messages should always be something personal. Right? Let them know that you care about them more than just the challenge pack that they bought. You actually care about them as a person. All right? Um, within your challenge, consider offering mini challenges. I'm going to give you an exact reason why. Mini challenges could be uh, one day that they're going to share their favorite recipe with the group, and you're going to pick the recipe that you like the most and give that person a free shaker bottle. You could also ask them, in part of a mini challenge within the challenge group, to share with the group one person they've inspired during your challenge group. So why would you ask them that? Because you are setting them up priming the pump for you to invite them to become a coach soon. So when you ask your challenger in week two, tell us about one person you've inspired already. Who has noticed that you're getting up early and working out or that you're um, drinking a shake instead of skipping breakfast? Who in your life has noticed that you've got more energy? Then they share that story in your challenge group. Then later when you go to ask them to become a coach, you say, gosh, Lori, remember in week two, how people were already noticing that you're a different person and that you're already inspiring people. You are already doing what I do. So you can prime the pump and get that conversation of coaching started early without them even knowing it. Other things that you can do in your group, I mentioned that you want to have a point system. I love my coach Amy Showman's point system. She came up with an acronym called HAPPY. It stands for hydration, activity, plate, meaning what was their nutrition that day, plan, did they make a plan for their fitness and nutrition and stick to it? And the why is you. She asked them to share what did they do for themselves? What did they, what did you do for your, yourself? Did you take a bath, go for a walk, listen to your favorite music, read a book? She, in her challenge group, she wants to really work on the whole person. So hydration, activity, plate, what they ate that day, plan, and you. Then one of her coaches, Kira, came up with a happy tracker as a way to, um, to track those points. Now, did someone else hand them this idea of a happy acronym and a happy tracker? No. Feel free to just be creative. You have carte blanche to run your business any way you want. The most successful coaches are the ones who bring their own personality and own excitement to it. Yes? So it doesn't need to be that someone else has done it. You can just do it yourself, make up your own happy tracker. A couple key points here for the end of your challenge groups. Of course you want to celebrate. Of course you want to make collages and um, congratulate the people in your challenge group on their pages so their peers see how they did and their friends notice those results. Those are potential referrals for you. And then what some of the coaches on my team are doing, um, my coach Heather Glenn on our team, at the end of her challenge groups, she's a star diamond. This is one thing she did to get there. At the end of her challenge groups, she did an opportunity Zoom in the challenge group. So if the challenge group ended on Friday, they finished with results. And let me tell you a little bit what, about what I do as a coach. So you could, on your last day of the challenge, invite someone to meet you, invite all of your challengers to meet you on a Zoom and say, drum roll, I'm gonna announce all the results and then stay on. I'm gonna pull back the curtain a little bit and explain to you what I do as a coach so you can see if this might be something that you wanna join me with next month. A really tangible, simple offer. 
So I like the idea of tying it into the results, invi inviting everybody to the celebration party, and then sharing what you do as a coach and inviting them to do it. My coach, Sharon Johnson, um, took an idea from Janelle Summers about doing coach sneak peeks. You can invite your challengers at the end to join you for a week of a sneak peek. Look behind the curtain of what coaching is all about. Most coaches are doing them as like a five-day sneak peek where you're sharing a little bit about the coaching business every day in a private Facebook group and then in the end inviting them to join your team. So every single Star Diamond on our team, every single one is running challenge groups together and using a lot of those tips that I just shared with you. So I hope that you can take some and use them too. All right, next slide. So <clears throat> how do you continue to create amazing experiences for your coaches? We just spent 10 minutes talking about creating, creating amazing experiences for your customers. Now you need to do it for your coaches. So one simple, obvious way, create a sense of team, welcome your new coaches. Now that seems so obvious, but I'm gonna show you some pictures in a minute. Here's how not to welcome a coach. Hey, Bob joined my team. He's so fired up to go sell P90X. Please support him, right? Don't welcome your coaches by welcome, welcome, welcoming them as a salesperson. They don't want to be that. Instead, welcome your coaches with about, what do you know about them? Hey, welcome my, my new coach, Kelly. She's a super fun, um, fit mom, really looking to bring other people with her on the journey, blah, 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 blah. Make it personal. All right, I'll show you some pictures of that. You can create amazing experiences for your coaches by helping them find a success partner. In my team meeting the other day, we talked about helping create matches made in heaven. I know my coach, Jenya, who's here today, has a great success partner in Kristen. Shelly and Lindsay shared about their success partnership. This is key. Every Star Diamond on my team, every one has a success partner. So if you want to be a Star Diamond, you need a success partner. Who should it be? Someone anywhere in your organization or even another team potentially. Ours are generally all within our organization, but not necessarily in each other's upline or downline. These are coaches who have met on our Facebook group or in our training, in our coach trainings. And they've clicked. They have similar goals. They have similar lifestyles. It doesn't always work on the first try. Sometimes I have to move my coaches around and have them try out a success partner for like a probationary period. Don't be afraid to cut ties and find a new one if it's not the right fit. A couple tips. Lindsay and Shelly get together every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific with a glass of wine on a Zoom. One lives in um, Oregon, one lives in Connecticut, and they get together on a Zoom and they share what were their wins from the past week, what were their failures from the past week, what are their goals for the next week, and they keep each other accountable and on track. They never, ever miss their Wednesday Zooms. Even when they're on vacation, even when it's not convenient, they do them. Get your coaches involved in team trainings right away. Um, we've talked about this in other places at Summit, but don't bring on a new coach, and as Hillary said earlier, dump them in a challenge group and be like, hey, enjoy Coach Basics, see you in 30 days. Create amazing experience for them by taking care of them during Coach Basics. It's not meant to replace you as a mentor. It's meant to support you as a mentor, yes? All right, invite them to help run a challenge. We talked about that earlier. Recognize and reward their little wins. I gotta share a quick story about this. On my last, on my daughter's last day of um, elementary school, my heart's pounding that she's going to junior high. She came home with a plastic bracelet. It was probably 11 cents. And she brought it in like it was gold. And she's like, mom, look. I was like, oh my gosh, how did you win that bracelet? It said Thunder Bay Junior High. And she's like, did you say, how did I win the bracelet? I said, yeah. She said, mom, I, I earned this bracelet. I was like, amen, of course you did. Tell me what you did to earn that bracelet. She said, well, a month ago, my teacher bought two bracelets, and there's 25 kids in my class. She said, the two kids who showed me that they're most mature and most prepared and most ready to take this next step to junior high are going to earn these. So what did she do? She freaking upped her game for that last month of school. She was there, like, she was like, Mom, we got to go, we got to go, we got to be on time, which is not my forte. And I got her there on time that last month of school. She stayed late. She helped put chairs back. She helped other kids with their homework. She asked the teacher for special jobs. She upped her game to earn an 11-cent bracelet. Why does this matter to you? 
Your coaches will up their game if you offer them some kind of incentive and reward that's not just the shiny object, it's your praise. It's that, man, they made you proud. My daughter wanted that bracelet because she wanted her teacher to be proud of her. She wanted my husband and I to be proud of her. Your coaches will work harder for you if they think that you're proud of them. Does that make sense? Yes? Can you help elevate your coaches and help them take more action by offering them some recognition and rewards? Next slide. Let me show you what some of these look like really quickly. How we, to create amazing experiences with your coaches, welcome them with wow. Now it's funny, I've got coaches out here in the audience and they're like, well, it looks like Kristen got a book and a t-shirt. Dang it, I never got that, Trina. Well, it changes over time, people. All right, this is what I sent out a couple weeks ago. Um, welcome people to your coach in a really fun way. Hillary, well, I'm gonna steal this, so you should too. She welcomes her coaches with like a bright red envelope for Team on Fire, and she puts a success magazine in there, and she puts other fun things in there, and they get this big bright red envelope. It looks like they got this really cool package. All right, next slide. You want to recognize your coaches with wow, all right? So on Facebook, I'm always recognizing my coaches any chance I get. You can find a million reasons to recognize someone. You just need to go do it. I recognize my coach, Jenya, who's here today for earning her free ticket to Summit by hitting Success Club. I recognize my coach, Amy, for hitting Diamond, and my coach, Danielle, for hitting Star Diamond. The reason why I shared these is I want to show you something. A tip for when you recognize people. Recognize them in a way that speaks to their target market. That's like a really fun tip. Think about this. Amy Sorensen's target market is other moms, and she especially likes other moms her age with kids in high school going off to college. So in her picture, I'm showing her kids, her, and I write that she's a fit mom, an amazing friend on my team. That speaks to other women in her market. They're like, now planting the seed, maybe I want to work with Amy. Uh, my coach, Danielle, she hashtags everything mama fit for life. Everything in her world revolves around her and her daughter. So my recognition to her includes that. Make sense? Cool. Next slide. Can I talk any faster? All right, reward your coaches with wow. Again, this isn't about spending money, but it is about recognizing people. It often stops in like high school, maybe even junior high. That we used to get medals and, re and awards for um, spelling bees, for, um, for sports contests, right? And all of a sudden we become an adult and it's like you can barely get a high five. My coach Nikki Kerrigan said the other day, how many people go to work every day and get a high five from five people in the office? No, they're like buried in their cubes, like on their Facebook, pretending to work, right? So we can reinstitute this in coaching. You can recognize, reward your coaches with cool stuff. I've got a lot of women on my team, apparently. And so I do a lot of bracelets, um, embossed leather phone cases, T-shirts. The most important thing that I send, what do they care about the most? They care about the card the most. I really think about what I want to share with them and why I think they're an amazing person. Edify them. Let them know why you think they're amazing because sometimes when we're failing all the time, we forget that we're amazing. Be that person who believes them to success. Next slide. All right, you can celebrate rank advancements, um, success club, their, when they run their first challenge. A fun thing I've been doing lately for my emeralds is I found these super expensive $1.99 post-it things that in the shape of an emerald. Um, those are from like Staples. Next slide. I stock up on stuff when I see it for sale at Big Lots or Walmart. So all these imagine your dream, create your happiness, live your life are from I think Big Lots. I got like 50 of them. I just took the whole shelf up to the counter. And I just have a stockpile of um, really cool things at my house that encourage me to send stuff out on a regular basis. Surprise your coaches. Next slide. I got to fly. All right, if you want to move your coaches up the spectrum from a duplicator running challenge groups, duplicating what you're doing on your team to a leader, you can help them by giving them an anatomy of an amazing team call. On my team, we run a team, a large team-wide call for Team Rockstar Fit the first Thursday of the month. Then a lot of my coaches do their own smaller team calls on all the other Thursdays to get people used to that same time slot. That's something that you could do. What is it that we do on our team calls that I think makes people feel really special, create an amazing experience? First of all, they're incredibly planned out. A team call for me is like hours and hours of work. My desk looks like a war room. I've been prepping and preparing for this one team call like it's a presentation. You should take it that seriously. 
I read the names of all the top success club and volume leaders on the team. I give gifts out to the top three in each category. I have a coach on my team who is an elite coach. We, tr we rotate, share elite tips. And then I interview three coaches every team call. I give the call a theme, and I interview coaches at different ranks in the business to show success. Why do I do testimonials and interviews on every single team call? Why should you? Because you want to control the conversation in that person's life for like the next month. You're gonna fuel their conversations because you're handing them great content. They're hearing how Crystal Boyle went from being a stay-at-home mom with no job to earning thousands of dollars a month and changing lives. Now they're telling their prospects about Crystal. You need to fuel their conversations. All right, that's an anatomy of a great team call for me. Next. Next. <laughs> Wake up, Hillary. Okay. Let's go. Uh, sharing um, amazing systems with your team. I've been talking about this. I just want to show you some of the pictures. We have a four-day focus on our team. It's um, We take that sampler pack that Beachbody offers, and we created a four-day program around it. You should steal this idea and do it. It's totally blown up our team. It helps people date you as a coach for four days, date the product for four days, throw them in a Facebook group for four days, give them a menu and take care of them for four days, and then invite them into a longer challenge. All right, so find amazing systems on your team and share them with your whole team. Next slide. Next. All right, here we go. I want to finish with this. A case study of two Star Diamonds um, on my team. Now, last year at Beachbody Summit, my friend and coach Tracy Granada was a diamond, which is cool, but not, because she was stuck. She'd been a diamond for years, actually, and she's really incredible, but she was stuck at diamond. What did Tracy do in one year to go from diamond to five-star diamond to actually achieve her dream big goal of being five-star by Summit and buying a cottage on the lake in our community, which she did? How did she do it? She did it by getting all of her coaches to start running challenge groups together. She did it by deciding that it's not just about her running challenge groups anymore. It is about helping other coaches on her team find their own niche. So Tracy sent me pages and pages of notes on all of her diamonds for this conference for me. And I just skimmed through them and looked at them like, yep, that's what she did. She interviewed each one of her diamonds, many who are here today. And she said, let me help you find your niche. Her niche had been Shakeology and then the ultimate reset. Then she started working with her husband on P90X3. But they needed to find their niche. And for them to become diamonds and for her to become a five star, she had to get out of her business, get out of your business, get into your coach's businesses, get to know them, get to know who they would best connect with, help them get their challenges off the ground with coaches on their team. That is what's going to propel you from diamond coach to five star diamond coach on her way, I believe, to 10 star diamond coach. Cool. Last slide right here. What if you want to go from diamond to five star to my friend Vito who walked across stage today, he's my personally sponsored coach, 11 star. Vito has taken all the things that we talked about today and put them into action, but where, here's where he focuses. If you want to play in the big leagues of star diamonds, six star, seven star, all the way up to superstar diamond, what's the one thing that I think all superstar diamonds have in common? It's what Vito is doing right now. He is creating amazing experiences for his coaches by absolutely full force diving into personal development with them. He has created his own entire training just on high performance tips. So he's like, by the time you've gotten to the point of being a diamond, you know how to run challenge groups, you know how to invite, you know how to overcome objections. How did he go from four star to 11 star and actually qualifying 12 star in one year? By saying to his coaches and to his recent emerging diamonds, we've been working on challenge groups, you know what you're doing, it's time to dig into you. And he created an entire training program about helping them shut the door on the past, see their purpose, and make a plan to get there. So if you want to play up here in the echelons of Superstar Diamond and earn some incredible bonuses that can change your family's lives, create amazing experiences for your coaches, dig into their personal development, and you will blow up your business like Vito did. So let me recap it here in 30 seconds. You've been an amazing audience. We are so appreciative of you. If you want to go from diamond to star diamond, it starts with the seemingly small, 
unimportant, everyday things that you can do for your customers and your coaches. From cards to recognition to gifts, it's all those little, little, little things that will add up to the stars. Thank you so much for being here today.